Okay, um, in this video today, we are going to learn about dun, da, da. functions, mathematical functions, and um, if you want to follow me, I am using a book uh, to as like a curriculum for all of my future tutorial videos in calculus. I am using the um, Stewart, James Stewart Calculus 7th Edition Early Transcendentals Calculus textbook. It has a blue integral sign on the cover and I'm basically just starting at section 1.1 And it's all about functions, and we start out by, uh, it's called four ways, oops, four ways to represent functions. Okay, four ways to represent functions, and I'm going to give all four to you, but first, oops, notification. First, what is a function? Well, um, a function is basically a machine. Okay. And I always represent it. I always explain functions like this. You have an input and you have an output. All right. And we'll denote function with f. Nice fancy f. Um a function is in math you can think of a function as an equation, you know, x squared plus x minus 5. That could be your function equation. Um, with a function, you always input something. All right, so you have an input. Okay, and when you input something into your function equation, it changes the input and gives you gives you one output. So that's basically the definition of a function. You've got one input, you've got one output. That's it. And this is so important because if you're looking at a, the graph of a function or if you're looking at the other ways to represent functions, which I'll go over in a few seconds, you'll see that some of the um, inputs and outputs uh, do not match this definition of a function. Sometimes with one output, you'll have two different or I'm sorry, with one input you'll have two different outputs and that is not allowed. You cannot have two different outputs. So let's look at the different ways. Because why can't you have two outputs? Well when you put one thing in you can only produce one thing unless your function machine is something that makes um, makes new material several new kinds of material from one object which I mean matter can't be created or destroyed that's a law of physics and of chemistry and you know general science so since matter can't be really created your function machine can't really create more than one output for something it's given functions in math simply change an input and give you only one output now two different functions however can um, two different functions can produce the same output given uh, a different input or whatever well n I'm sorry one function can produce two outputs based on two different inputs and you'll see that in in a few seconds the first way to represent a function first way to represent a function so first way is through what's called mapping. Mapping. And that's when you're given a list of inputs and then a list of outputs that correspond to those inputs. So I've been using blue for inputs. So how about let's say we have a function and we input one and we input two. And let's say the function outputs zero and negative five. Then to draw a mapping to make this complete you would draw which input yields which output. So let's make it simple. Let's say this function. When negative 1 is input yields the output 0 and when 2 is input it the function produces negative 5. Alternatively you can 
represent it like this. What if the function produces negative 5 for negative 1 and 0 for 2? That can happen. You can crisscross the arrows. Um, so what isn't allowed? This isn't allowed. Look at that. You have two different outputs for one input. Not good. Not allowed. Um, this, however, is allowed. You have one input, one output. Yes, that that is okay with our rules, and you have one input, one output. Though the input is the same, I mean, I'm sorry, though the output is the same for a different input, you still have one output per input. Alright? That's the first way to represent a function. The second way, um, Stuart says in his book, is through, um, what was this? Uh, verbally, you can represent a, a function verbally by a description in words. So, uh, I mean, I, I really don't want to go in depth with this because it's easy just to describe a function verbally. You know, if if um, if one oh, that's Roman numeral one if one is the input. Then function f um, outputs or yields or produces, I don't know, 0 or 5 or 6 or whatever. Can, whatever output it produces. This is a verbal description, right? The third way, Stuart says, to represent a function is... Um, graphically or through a graph with a graph and that is a very good way to represent a function so for example let's say we have a graph we have our x and we have our y okay and let's just say this is our function so bad all right let's do absolute value function absolute value function. So the blue line represents our function and this is how to graphically represent technically um, this is a what's called a composite function but we'll get to that later um, but this is a graph and you've plotted the function so this is a perfect perfectly great good representation of a function. Um, and then our fourth and final way to represent a function is algebraically with an explicit formula. So I hope you can read my cursive. Algebraically. So for example, f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus x squared plus 6. This is a perfectly good uh, representation of a function. You are giving the explicit formula. Oops, given the explicit formula for f of x, a function. There's also going back. Um, Stuart, when he said, when I said mapping, Stuart actually in his book does not say mapping. He says uh, um, numerically. And he, then he goes to describe it as by a table of values. And this is kind of like a table of values, except you're putting in arrows between two different cells that aren't even connected by a mid-cell. So it's not really a table. But this is mapping. This is a numerical representation. There's another numerical representation. Oops, got to the end of my slide. I'll just, uh, crud. I'll just add um, five. David's five ways to represent a function. And this is through... Uh, coordinate points or coordinate pairs. So, for example, if you're given the set 0, 1, 4, 5, 112, you can say this is a function. These would be the inputs. I probably should have done that in blue. And these are the outputs. And I'll explain why later, because coordinate points 
this is the y value, and this is the y value, and this is the y value, and they're the outputs, which is equivalent to f of x, if you can see up here, f of x, the explicit formula representation. Um, so yes, here you can tell easily, oh yeah, this is a function, because for every input, there is one output, one output, one output, one output. If, however, you had this, uh, how about 4 produces 5, and 4 also produces 1, or whatever, keep going in your set. This, automatically, you don't even have to read the rest of the values. Just seeing this, 4 produces 5, and 4 produces 1? No. This is automatically not a function. So those those are your four or five ways to represent a function if you want to count my last one. Um, just remember, functions take an input, change it through some formula, and produce one output, not two, because you can't create more than one thing from when you're given one thing. And it just defies the laws of nature. So that's all about functions. That's an introduction to functions. I'm going to make more videos later about uh, how to graph functions, how to do all this function properties and stuff like that. So stay tuned.